I woke up. The seats around me felt rough and sweaty. My worn jeans made a sifting sound as blood worked its way back into my legs. I had been dreaming of home, of mom and dad, of that old garden behind the porch. But as my eyes adjusted to the light, I realized I was still on the train. I stood up and stretched in the empty car. Around me lay discarded food cans and empty boxes of supplies. The car smelled foul from the scattered debris and my own sweat. It was past the end of the month, so it would be time to move any day now. This morning, I had work to do. I gathered up all the empty boxes and stacked them neatly in the back right corner of the train. The day before, I stacked them on the left side. I didn't know precisely what would trigger the door to open, of course, but usually the door opened after I stacked the empty boxes and cans in a certain pattern. At least, that was my theory. It had been two days now without food, and still the door to the car wouldn't open. It was no good trying to force the door. I learned that one the hard way. The lock on the doors was so thick that whenever I would try to open it, I would only end up cutting myself badly. After a few hours of rearranging, I grew too tired to continue and sat down for a bit in one of the seats. I stared at the locked door, listening to the sounds of the train as it hurried onwards towards a non-existent destination. Beyond that door, there was food and water. I licked my lips, just thinking about it, as my stomach growled in protest. I looked through the garbage to see if there was anything left to eat, knowing full well there wasn't. After an hour of this, I began pacing the car, trying not to look at the locked door at the other end. When it was time to change cars, the light would turn green, but would only stay green for about a minute before turning red again. One month, I missed the light. Never again. I was still pacing at the other end of the car when I noticed the light had turned green. My heart jumped, and I dashed madly towards the door. I grabbed the handle and yanked the door open. The space between cars was my only taste of being outside each month, but I was always too hungry and too anxious to appreciate the experience. I waited with impatient dread for the other car's light to turn green. It did so, right on schedule. I pulled open the door and I looked into the new car. It was clean and smelled fresh, and at the far end there was a new set of supplies stacked neatly. I ran forward and got down on my knees to examine the food and water as the door behind me quietly shut again and the light turned red. I started weeping as I switched through the supplies. They were all perfectly normal food and beverage items. I bit into some bread. It was fresh and delicious. It was heaven to finally eat something fresh again. At the same time, however, I knew I must conserve food. I had just finished cataloging the food items when the unimaginable happened. Another train whipped past beside mine. I jumped to the window, staring into the cars of the other train as they sped past. There was no one inside any of the cars as they passed my window. My heart was pounding in my chest. Then, just as the last car came into view, I saw a girl with her face pressed up against the glass, a haunted expression frozen on her features. Our eyes met for a brief second, and in them I thought I could see a history sadder than my own. How long had she been on the train? Her mouth was moving, and then she was out of sight forever. I slumped back into one of the seats. I looked at the boxes of food. Outside. At the other seats. Back to the food. Then back outside. Finally, I had made a decision. I grabbed the emergency hammer. With a desperate yell, I proceeded to smash the window glass with all my might, making an uneven break with jagged edges. The glass hit the track with a loud crashing sound. Taking a deep breath, I pulled myself up to stand crouching in the window frame. The jagged bits of glass cut my hands as I gripped the window tightly. No one should live like this, I said out loud. I stared down at the tracks as they sped before me, like a pair of old newsreels. I jumped. My eyes opened, numbed by harsh light. My hand clutched something soft and a sense of dread filled me as my senses returned. I was still on the train, lying on the floor of the same car I was just in. I didn't have the energy to do anything after that. I simply lay where I'd been deposited, staring up at the ceiling of the car. It was painted to look like a sky. I closed my eyes and dreamed of home 